This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Guys, and we are back live here in Hawaii, Think Tech Studios in Hawaii. But as you guys know, I'm not in Hawaii. I'm actually in Denver, Colorado. But thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button, wherever you may get this on the podcast, YouTube video, or if you're catching us live. But uh, as always, guys, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So today, we got on a very, very special guest. Uh, we have Mr. Ronald Davis. And the reason we have Mr. Ronald Davis on today is he's doing something very interesting where he built the largest youth development program for student athletes, building the, the, and the largest in the U.S. So we definitely want to hear about that. You know, being a financial literacy show, I think it's very important. You guys have seen different uh, NBA athletes and different NFL athletes and stuff like that come on to the show. But uh, it'd be nice to see that someone is starting kids at a younger age, and we're going to see what that's all about. But I know you guys didn't come here to hear my mouth. Let me go ahead and introduce my guest. Mr. Ronald Davis, how you doing today, sir? It's going good, man. Glad to be here. Glad to be involved, man. I appreciate you having me on. Definitely, definitely. So people out there who don't know who Ronald Davis is, who is Ronald Davis? Well, um, he's, he's a man of many, many trades, I guess. Um, well, I, I'm a, a former athlete. Um, I went through the, the ranks, man. I played in arena football, um, dealt with, you know, the different... I guess, uh, business aspects of the CFL and the NFL, you know, definitely trying to pursue that dream of athleticism. But uh, in the midst of all that stuff, man, I became a, a youth advocate, um, really started caring more about the community, you know, really making a, a difference in, in kids' lives. Um, it probably started earlier than that, but, you know, this was about the time where everything started to mold. So, uh, you know, from there, it's, it's just become, uh, I was real nosy. Real, real nosy. I wanted to know a lot of answers to what was going on. Why kids are failing so easily? Um, why do kids grow up into being, you know, very consistent to how they were as a child, as a grown up? And uh, just, just really wanted to to learn more. So I, I became a, a student of that world. Okay, that's a very interesting package. You went to Alabama State, right? Right, right. Alabama State University out of Montgomery, Alabama. Okay, you go to Alabama State. You know, congratulations on y'all. Uh... You know, the state of Alabama's, uh, you know, victory last night in the college national championship. You know, me being an original Georgia boy, I'm not too happy about that. But, hey. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. They, got a, they got a good thing going over there. You know, them folks, uh, they got a good program. They do it really, really, really well. They got good support. So, you know, hats off to them. Um, you know, the Hornets, I think, I, I think our school at this point in time is probably well more known for, uh, for track. And we got some fast demons out there at Alabama State. So, you know, shout out to the Hornets. Okay, definitely. Now, the thing about it, you, you speak about this youth development program. What it entails, like, the, the student athlete, you know, by you being a student athlete and going on to the pros and arena football, what, what, now, now, what is it, does it consist of? Like, you know, what, is it, what does it do? How do you find these student athletes or whatnot? Well, I mean, you know, see, important. The, the focus of it is the kid, you know, and, and everybody wants to help kids. There's a lot of programs out there that do things for kids. But, you know, the, the, the things that we focus on with the kids is the athletic and the educational portion. Um, and that's what we highlight the, the, the most. Athletically, we don't focus on basketball, football, baseball. We focus on athleticism, uh, which makes it a little bit more centralized to the specific child. You know, everybody can't jump like LeBron or shoot like Steph or, or run down the field and make big hits so it's not supposed to be focused on that but whether you're a great athlete or you're uh, a kid that's excited about running and gunning and being energetic or you're the most intellect intelligent child um, or you just like to be you know scientific experiments you can leverage both ways. So we want to be able to help the kid that's really good at sports, but they may lack in education. And we want to help the kid that's, that, that has education principles pretty ha handled, but are not necessarily the best athlete. Okay. So is it is it just in Alabama is where you, or, or just in, um, because you're located in Baltimore, right? Am I right about that? Uh, I'm currently I'm currently in Wichita, man. I'm, we're, we're located everywhere. Um, this thing started out, 
It started out originally. It started out as a gesture. You know, I just wanted to help kids. You know, I was just uh, I was real passionate about it. You know, people do a lot of talking. Folks might throw a couple dollars, but folks are not spending time doing it. So, you know, we took a lot, um, did a lot of uh, research, did a lot of philanthropy work. Was able to work with a lot of nonprofit organizations around the country initially, and I did that in the off season. And then the uh, the last three years, it, it's had more of a, a monetized effect on different groups. So we're not just working with student athletes. We're not just uh, doing things with sports and education. We got the military involved. You know, we're, we're reaching out to school districts and we get, we're hands on having conversations about, well, how can we help? Who can we bring in to help with the influential side of things? You know, it's not, uh, people focus on kids and the first thing here is charity. You know, it's like, okay, these are for the poor kids. But yeah. at the end of the day, when we're talking about the mission, it involves everybody. So we're talking about the corporate world. How can these businesses, you know, leverage the fact that they have money, that they do want visibility, they do want credibility, they do want all of these different things. How can we take it to the next level? You know, not just do our normal um, sponsorship, you know, tax write-off, and then go on about our business. How can we be more visible with our hands in the community, in the school district, um, in the medical field. You know, we, we've taken the, the approach to involve everybody, but also find what each group needs to actually be effective. Okay. Now, in your program, what do you, what do you teach the student athletes? Is it, do you get ready for the pros, or just life, or what is actually like, you know, um, we, we have a, a slogan to learn, train, and compete. Whatever we do, we need to learn it. We need to be a master of our craft. You know, if you're going to be into the communication industry, you need to be able to talk. You need to be able to carry yourself in a certain manner and be able to speak at a, at a different level than someone that may be in another field that doesn't have a lot to do with communication. Mm-hmm. So with the, with the kids, we're teaching them um, better habits of studying, better habits of understanding. Um, you're working with someone that you probably are more likely to respect a little bit further than an actual teacher or principal or someone that you see every day. So we really, really highlight the influence of what athletes are in our in our country. Not just, you know, the big time guys. There's folks that are, are very influential in, in a normal realm. You know, I'm not a big time guy, but at the end of the day, you know, I stand for something that's pretty strong and kids love interacting with me. So we're, we're teaching athleticism um, anything that you can transfer over to every sport or, you know, health and wellness, you know, cycling, jogging, marathon runners. And we're also going a little further in education and focusing on math, reading, and finance. Mm. Now, I know everybody loves STEM. STEM is the mm-hmm. thing. But if you can't read and count and write at a certain level, STEM doesn't really do what it can do. You know, you can't excel at that level. It just looks good. So we're all about the look in America. And things are the, the sexier things are, the better they they do nine times out of ten. So we've incorporated activities surrounding the education activities. So we're doing other things than just reading and writing, running and jumping. We're having right. fun. There's things that are there for the the parent on the fitness level. There's different vendors that provide their expertise. Whether we're talking health and wellness, um, whether we're talking. Uh, those nonprofit programs, mm-hmm. uh, corporations that want to have more visibility. So we're talking, I guess, more small business to mid-level uh, corporations. There's a lot for it. It's a lot involved as far as coordinating these things, but there's a lot of benefit as well because everybody has their piece to the puzzle. Okay. Okay, so that's that's pretty cool. And it's one of the things you said that not only you're teaching athleticism, you're doing things to prepare them for life. Now, for how can someone get involved, maybe find out one locally in their area, because I know you see all over the United States. How can someone get involved and like support you guys? Or if someone has a child, they may want to get involved with the program or something like that. How would you, uh, how, how can they do that? So we've got a couple different ways. Um, first of all, we will we'll have a lot of information coming out in the next couple of weeks through school systems, okay. uh, recreational groups, more localized information. Um, but you can go to digsimpact.org. It's D-I-G-S impact.org. You can find us on Instagram at oprep.usa. Uh, we got more of a corporate page, which is dig.digusa. And I then we're, up we're all on- Oprep on, on Instagram? Yes, oprep.usa. Oprep. So can I find y'all on here? Oprep. 
dot USA dot USA okay, there we go let's see all right you guys got a new uh new follower well, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. We, um, we're going to really make some noise, do some different things, you know, have some different ways of getting people's attention uh, because it's, uh, it, is, it is a big deal. It is an issue. Education is uh, suffering and struggling. But, you know, when we think about business, we think about tech, we think about all these things that are constantly evolving. Um, they have their place in it. And, and, and as we create more awareness to them, how... Um, beneficial and how much more visibility and how much more hands-on that they can be in these communities i think a lot of companies will, will do better because now you have different eyes coming from a different location that may be more interested in what they're doing or what they're capable of doing so you know it's uh, some of it is psychological a lot of it is physical it's about investing time uh, some of it is financial of course but um, overall it's just about participating and being able to impact at a uh, at, at a very very um frequent rate okay now going forward like you you, you say uh we were speaking offline about this people love to say hey you know they see you doing well and they automatically assume that they can do the same thing now what are some of the i would say not setbacks what are some of the struggles you've seen so far dealing with uh you know going forward with your program Honestly, uh, that's a great question, man. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna, I might piss a few people off, but everybody wants to get paid. I think that's the biggest issue. Uh, when we take our America, we take the opportunities that we can do just by listening to someone, a kid in general, which we, which is what our focus is. Um, Kids just want to be heard sometimes. You know, they're, they're, I think when they talk about discipline and behavior, they go into a, a certain aspect, oh, well, this kid is in the hood or this kid has this problem because of X, Y, Z. A lot of our issues has been the mere fact that people haven't taken enough time to look at how they can do things. So in the medical world, nine times out of 10 medically, if a kid's not hurt, injured, or sick, you don't feel as if medically there's anything that they can do for a child but you know when you talk about interest level when we talk about activities and things of that nature the medical world has so much more that they can give to a kid that's seven eight nine or ten i got an eight-year-old daughter she's so you know aware and so uh, open to to learning things that anything i give her nine times ten even if she doesn't like it she's open to doing it so therefore there's an opportunity for her to you know be more involved with that i think it's the same thing business-wise it's the same thing inside some of these communities because it's, it's just lack of awareness and lack of understanding of what people are capable of doing okay now you said that everybody wants to get paid can you elaborate on that when you say everybody wants to get paid how is that an issue it becomes an issue because if it's not my, part of my agenda, then I'm not so open to be involved. And you know, credibility is a, is an important thing in America. We want to know that the person that I'm dealing with is going to follow through. Mm -hmm. And I've come across a lot of pros that at that time, maybe four years ago, where I was. I didn't have that same sincerity. So therefore, the follow through wasn't necessarily as uh, convenient back then. And I think that that was part of my growth. You know, a lot of the things where I failed or that I might have uh, had a setback, you know, it was, it was a great learning lesson because that's where I learned more about contracts. That's where I learned more about um, the, the legality side of things and what can and can't be done. Working with different groups, nonprofit, government, it's different. And when you want to help and when you want to be able to do things for people or, or should I say kids or whomever, you're, you're going with the more of a passion mindset instead of a business mindset. And so as I've grown, uh, even being a, a business major, I mean, I still don't believe that some of the things that we that we have a part of these curriculums actually prepare me for the different things that were in this field because they require different things. I'm working with athletes. I'm working with governmental agencies. I'm working with nonprofit organizations. And since everybody's system is different, to be able to, you know, chop it up, chop that pie up, you know, to the point where, you know, everybody's getting the same amount of attention. 
Mm -hmm. If there is a return, that everybody's return is coming to them in, in the manner that they feel, um, uh, I guess, happy with. Mm -hmm. And then, did we succeed with the kid? There's a lot of fly-by-night programs. I'm not one of those. You know, when kids leave these activities, when people and parents leave these activities, everybody has a little better understanding of something. You know, health and wellness. Um, you know, what it takes to be an athlete. What it takes as far as athletic responsibility. All of those things are key components into it being successful, or is it's a waste? It's a waste of, of time completely. At least that's my opinion. Maybe somebody out there that, that looks at the business plan and says, well, that doesn't matter as much. But um, when I started this, man, I started it, you know, for free. Kids gave donations. So where we are now, our mission has really, really um, over overshadowed the business aspects of it. Okay. So is it a, a nonprofit organization that you guys operate under or? No, sir. I'm an LLC. Um, okay. I've been an LLC for the last couple of years. I partner with uh, several nonprofits around the country. A lot of them are mid level. Um, I have worked with the, uh, the the Boys and Girls Club systems in different aspects of the U.S. I've worked with the Salvation Army in different locations. Um, but I really love working with more mom and pop type um, nonprofits. I uh, just oh. opened a, a partnership with Operation Lunchbox. Uh, they're a nonprofit out of Atlanta, Georgia. They do a lot of activity with feeding kids that are not able to feed themselves when school's not in. So they get the free lunch to school, but then when school's not going on, these kids are hungry. And there's wow. kids like all the country. So how you find them is very, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's difficult, depending on um, the knowledge of the resource. But they were... That, that brought me to them because they were getting kids ramen noodles, pop tarts, you know, they was getting kids that type of food, which it, I said, at the end of the day, what they're doing is amazing, but they got to be able to feed these kids healthy food. I mean, mm -hmm. we take a kid and we stuff pop tarts and ramen noodles and, and not to discredit those brands because those, they, they fit in a snack mm -hmm. form. But we're talking about nutrients, we're talking about vitamins, and minerals. So to be able to work with a nonprofit like that and find, you know, looking for a sponsor for them to, to be able to work with because what they're doing, they started out of their own pocket. It's something that they, they developed and they, they figured out how to be able to help kids and why it was important. So, you know, that was something that was became important to me was I know there's more nonprofits out there that are doing things that are not consistent in our society. Mm -hmm. And so we started searching for them and we started looking a little deeper and of course word of mouth LinkedIn of course has been uh, a great source and um, it's, it's, it's caught fire. So right now I think we're uh, I have probably it's probably a total of somewhere around 29 profits that we um, have supporting us as mm -hmm. far as we're trying to help them execute what they're doing and and of course they're providing uh, something for the kids or something for the program okay now what you've done so far we're starting your LLC branching out to other nonprofits around the United States and you know feeding kids educating kids things like that what is it that you see in the future going forward or what is the goal of 2018? Or what do you want to take it next? Well, do you want to have one like every major city, or what is the what is the goal with this? Um, I, I want to. I think the program needs to be where it's welcome. You know, there's a lot of places uh, that you deal with when you're on the local level dealing with kids. You know, you, you got your. I want my kid over here, or I want my kid over there. So it's not something that I necessarily deal with. Uh, the impact tour it'll spread. Every year we'll look to do more. Um, there's been some contact from Canada as far as, you know, utilizing the program and the activities that we're doing. It's not so much of us helping kids. People are helping kids all over the country. It's, it's more of what's involved in the program, kind of the ingredients that kind of make it taste good. And I think that that's a big deal because it's not normal. It doesn't exist. There's no, there's no group or um, activity like it with this type of focus. So, you know, uh, as far as what's going forward, we'll, we'll continue to exercise different markets. Um, we'll definitely have activity going forward um, on a, on a day to day basis with certain areas, uh, Dallas, the Dallas area being one of those areas. 
um, we'll, we'll have we'll utilize the program on a day-to-day -day basis in the central Dallas area and um, we'll, we'll be able to collect more data we'll be able to collect more insight on you know what's what's working well or what may need to be improved but at the end of the day it's about scholarships and championships you know we want to put kids in college or give kids a two-way go to decide what they're going to do with their life and whether that be athletically whether that be through education and i guess you could throw a third one as far as jumping into the corporate world you know exercising the mind there's a lot of uh, millennials that are doing big things you know that we witness every day but i think that there's a there's an area of kid that might come from a a, a cubby hole type location or a cubby hole type area that might lack motivation, might lack the the, the, the uh, confidence that they can do things. So I believe that we'll create a lot of different avenues because we'll be able to touch kids that really didn't believe in themselves or, you know, just wasn't in the right situation. So being that resource for, for the world, uh, I think would probably be the end result, you know, being able to have access into a lot of different areas, uh, more than what we have. I think right now we're getting ready for 30 this year. Mm -hmm. Last year we were at 12. So one to, to, to repeat in different locations where we have an 85 percent success rate there. So we have 85 percent of all the, 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 the cities that we worked with last year. We have them confirmed for this year. And, you know, we just kind of continue to grow, you know, continue to find the right people to be involved, continue to make my team stronger. I got a darn good team, bro. Um, honestly, I shouldn't. I did this by myself for five years, literally. Every single aspect by myself. Last year was the most success we had. I had the most help. I had the most support. I had the uh, probably the best type of professionals that I had come in contact with at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and it gave opportunity for this year. So I think with anything you're doing, um, the growth aspect just depends on who you got in, in your nucleus and, and how well y'all work together. Okay. Now, what's the biggest thing that you you would say that you like uh, need right now? Like you would say, hey, this is going forward right now to help us go forward. This is probably what we need, and this is how people can help us out. What is that? Um, the biggest need is awareness, and which awareness. is what we're, we're getting better at. This is a great opportunity, a great platform to uh, educate people on not only what we're doing, but how they can be involved. So it's, it's really awareness, um, getting getting more corporate groups involved. There's CEOs all over the country, and regardless of what their purpose or their thing that draws them to the tour, um, there is, is is so much help. They're helping their area. Every every everybody, national groups, uh, regional groups, local groups, they're they're putting something in their community that's not there right now. They're giving a resource that's not there right now, whether they um, are, are involved with $1,000, $50,000 in-kind donations. Uh, we've definitely been looking for hotel groups around the country. Um, we want to work with more nonprofits. Okay, so, so you're saying that someone can like have their own franchise into their own community? 100%. That's what it's about. It's, okay. the community. It, 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 it's, it's all community first. Now, I, I, there is such a heavy business situation involved because one, money, two, or we're talking about kids, we're talking about safety, we're talking about insurance. There's, you know, you got all those type of things involved. Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, um, you're empowering your area. You're empowering the kids that your kids are around. You're empowering the, the corporate groups that uh, you either shop at or that you want to be able to uh, support. So that, that the community first aspect is um, is very very important, especially to a lot of corporations. Okay, and that is very important. How you went to Alabama State and became a professional athlete with the arena, arena football and. NFL or whatnot, and now that you're turning around and using your expertise to show a lot of kids along the way. Now, on the uh, financial literacy aspect, do you have a financial literacy program? Are you looking at doing a financial literacy program? How do you feel about the financial literacy aspect of you know teach you know of kids having that you know going into adulthood or college or to act, or to become a pro athlete? The, the financial literacy part is is really important. Um, as far as our program and what we provide, we give the basics of what maybe even some grown-ups don't know. You know, it's not just about adding and counting. Um, we want them to be aware of what they can do on a, on a low low level for banks. Uh, what they can do to save money for themselves, you know, learn to put things aside, learn to 
uh, control some of those urges. Uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because we see it happen every day. We see people going broke every day. We see businesses going bankrupt. Um, the, the things that are in our economy, some areas are just weaker than others, you know? And so understanding the global scheme of the financial world has been uh, something that I had to learn. You know, I, I, had to, I had to grow from, you know, a place of where I, what I was taught, basically, the habits that I learned as I was growing up. And, and it's definitely held a lot to, to the success of what we've been able to do. But as far as the program itself, we've had a lot of financial groups reach out to us. Um, we have a, uh, what we put in place for financial advisors to kind of help their visibility by volunteering for the local area. And that way we have professional teachers doing it. That's not my world, even as a management major. Um, I, like I said, it's about being in your craft. So we really reach out to different groups. Um, of course, you can go to digsimpact.org and sign up uh, as a volunteer. And we, we, we try to appreciate our volunteers in many different ways. Okay, awesome, awesome. That is uh, amazing, you know, what you're doing, uh, bringing that, you know, here on, on our show. That's one of the things that we preach and we talk about is financial literacy because it doesn't matter what field you go into in life, whether you become an athlete, become a doctor, a lawyer, or whatnot, you're going to need some type of financial literacy somewhere down the line, right? And now, before we close this out, is there anything, what's the biggest thing people you want them to take away from this? And also, how can they get in contact with you? Uh, all of the great stuff like that. Off your social medias. Well, you know, I think the biggest thing, you know, not just from this interview, but from the grand scheme of things, is that there's, there's something you can do. Mm-hmm. There's something you can provide. It doesn't matter what level of your life you have. It doesn't matter how much money you have. There's involvement that you can, you, can, you can give to the youth. There's involvement that you can give to your community. And then when you take that mindset, if you can monetize it, then of course, by all means, that's what you should do because you got to take care of yourself first. But at the same time, uh, it doesn't take a lot to talk to a kid. It doesn't take a lot to sit up here and give um, you know constructive criticism or good advice. And you know, the, the Make an Impact Tour is about just that. You know, bringing bringing different aspects of our life, bringing different aspects of our community together um, to to uplift the youth because the youth have have a lot to do with what we're doing in America and where we're heading. As far as finding us, um, you know, we're on digsimpact.org. Uh, you can find us at oprep.usa on Instagram. And uh, we're also the corporate the corporate page for a Davis Integration Group is dig dot dig usa usa, and that's also on Instagram. Uh, and then we're on Facebook as well at dig dot dig usa. That's okay. all of our at our uh, channels. What, what was the Facebook again? The Facebook was dig dot dig usa. Dig dot dig. Okay, I want to look that up. So dig dot dig. We're doing real time. So there we go. You said dig, D-I-G, dot D-I-G? Am I right on that? Yeah, D-I-G, dot D-I-G, USA. Okay, is there any space in it under the USA? Because uh, let me make sure I got that right. All right. Okay, boom. We got you there. So I got them on Facebook. It's also got a new following on Instagram. Definitely, we are big in supporting the, uh, our kids and teaching our kids because they are our future. And I'm big on telling people, too, if it was something you was missing in your childhood and you don't see around, how about you create it yourself? And that's exactly what you did. So I definitely want to give you a, a, a big thumbs up and, a, and appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, I then, and what you're talking around the, and around the globe, uh, teaching kids and um, teaching them and helping them grow and things like that, you know. And with that being said, guys, this is the Investor Show. You guys know how to get involved with Diggs, uh, the largest student athlete program in USA, started by a pro athlete, you know. So you can't beat that. So get involved, find ways to get involved. And I want to shine light on companies like this that are doing great things for the community. And is there anything we can do to support, you know, one phone call away, and uh, always, guys, this is the Investor Show. This is your host, the Prince Dykes, the Prince of Investing. Thank you for tuning in. And to the next video podcast, whatever you see us do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.